As the scene fades in, we see a very grumpy silver fern sitting under a bush, wondering why she had not scented her father recently. It had been a few days after the war with the rogues. Surely things had calmed down by now. The she-cat's ears flicked as she heard the annoying voice of Vol hiss, but before she could get up, her brother, Stormheart, approached her very quickly. The Tom looked like he had something dark on his mind as he trotted over. Silverfern, he said in a more or less friendly tone, taking a quick breath. Hey, Stormheart, what's up? she asked. Uh, can we talk? he asked nodding to the corner of the camp with his tail, where it would be a bit more quiet. Silverfern's eyes squinted. This was very odd for her brother. Uh, sure. The siblings took off towards a more quiet part of the camp, almost hiding behind a bush. They leaned in close. Silverfern was extremely curious at this point. Stormheart's tail nervously flicked back and forth, his heart pounding. Do you remember when we were apprentices and um, we talked in the den that one night? His voice was low. The silver she-cat's fur immediately stood on end. Yes, I remember, she whispered, taking in a deep breath. He couldn't help but smile softly at his sister. He's gone, Silverfern. He's gone. I took care of him, just like I said I would as an apprentice. He can never hurt another cat again, he said proudly, as Silverfern shot up. What? Who's gone? She was panicking, trying not to show it, but her paws started to shake. Her brother's eyebrow marks raised a bit, surprised at her flustered reaction. Our, our father, he said, glancing around, making sure no one was listening. As the dread sunk in, she couldn't help but yell. How could you do that? He was our father, Stormheart, she hissed, not caring if anyone heard. Stormheart was shocked. Silverfern, a father is someone who would take care of us, like Badgerclaw. He, he was just a murderer, his voice almost breaking. I couldn't just let him get away with killing Little Sprout. You don't know that. You weren't there. You didn't see it, she hissed, trying to hold back her own tears. All she could remember was her father coming up to her and comforting her, taking her somewhere safe to live for a while until she was brought back to camp. And most days she wished she was still with him and he had never brought her back. Shaking her head, she shouted, move out of my way. Not waiting for him to actually move, she gently shoved him to the side with her shoulder. Wait, Silver for he began to speak when he was shoved over, his eyes growing worried. The sound of her brother's paw steps only caused her legs to run faster. She needed to get out of here. Thankfully, there was a few warriors at the entrance and they stopped Stormheart to talk, giving her time to slink off. She headed straight for the dump. Normally, she would just go there to break stuff, but today she picked up a familiar scent. It was Volhis. He let out a yawn after a long day on patrol. He enjoyed hanging out here in the sunlight sometimes. Silverfern flexed her claws and realized this was the perfect cat to let out her frustrations on. She carefully snuck up on his crate making sure not to make a sound. Getting closer and closer, holding her breath as she walked past the catmint. Within a heartbeat, she leaped 
actually leaping too far and completely over the cat, quickly turning and making another leap, this one actually making contact with him and slamming him into the crate. Full hiss grunted and tried to squirm out from underneath her. Not so fun is it now, Silverfern teased, just like he used to do to her as an apprentice. The tom looked up glaring. What do you want? What are you even doing? Get off! He yowls, kicking her in the chest. Silverfern let out a small hiss, but continued to dig her claws deep into his shoulders. It was only when the blood began to stain her white paws she snapped out of it, leaping off of him. Vol hiss rolled over on his side, coughing up some blood as she quickly decided to run. Stopping for a moment to breathe, she hissed under her breath. How could she be so stupid? What was she going to do now? Her mind immediately thought of the den that was near Shadow Clan that her father took her to. It would at least give her time to think about her next step. Back at camp, Volhis returned limping, bleeding still from his wound, as two kids ran up. Whoa! Volhis! What happened to you? The little white kit asked as a few more cats began to surround. He simply shrugged it off. It's nothing. Vol, is everything all right? What happened to you? A she-cat spoke. With a sigh, he nodded to her. I'll speak with you, alone. Volhis finally finished the whole story as the she-cat gasped. What? Do you have any idea why? When suddenly Bubble Leap approached, at least she ran away before she did anything permanent, he shrugged. Wait, who? Bubble Leap's head tilted as Vol Hiss glared at her. Your bestie just attacked me. Who, Stormhawk? Silverfern? She realized. Winterstorm piped up. We should talk to Marastar after we get you patched up. You should heal in the medicine den, and we can continue this conversation there. Volhis nodded, but continued talking to Bubble Leap. I think she's still mad about what me and Sparrowpod did to her all those moons ago, he grumbled. Well, you probably deserved it, Bubble Leap scoffed. Just as Volhis snorted, they both couldn't help but chuckling before she turned. I'll see if I can talk to her later. Maristar could be seen in her den speaking to her deputy as Winterstorm motioned again to the medicine cat den. Finally, he made it in there and tried to settle down. Just as Deadheart approached, Volhis, what is this about a badger? Badger? Full hiss retorted, confused. The tuxedo pelted Tom furrowed his brow. Why are you so injured? You need rest, you crazy bee brain. Deadheart quickly pushes Volhis back into the moss nest, not waiting for him to slowly get comfortable. I suppose Silverfern's the badger then. He replied, still defiantly not laying down. Deadheart let his eyes narrow at the name. That feline he had thought always to be bad news. He remained silent for the rest of the time, picking out and chewing and mixing herbs. Eventually, though, curiosity got the better of him. Mind telling me what happened? He gently rubbed his paws on the Tom's wounds. Full Hiss's ears laid flat on his head. Not much to tell. She attacked me, ran away. End of story. Deadheart nodded and slid a few poppy seeds over to the warrior, sighing. 
Here. These will knock you out. I'd rather stay awake. The warrior simply retorted, Fine, but I don't want you doing anything stupid, so just stay here, the medicine cat whispered before walking out and heading to Marrowstar's den. Approaching, he was happy to see Winterstorm already waiting outside the den. Excuse me, Marrowstar. Dead heart turned, inching closer. Is this about Silverford and Volhis? The white she-cat nods. I think it should come from him, though. Marrowstar prowled out of her den. Right on cue, she nudged Brindleshade before engaging with the serious cats. What is it? There was an issue with Volhis today. She finally let out as both the leader and deputy stood in front of her. Yes, you're right. He's awake, so you can talk to him. Young warriors, she mumbled with a growl. What did they do now? There was a small conversation between the group of cats, but it was decided that Maristar should speak to Volhis in person. I don't know what's gotten into everybody, but lead the way. Stepping into the medicine cat den, she spotted Volhis on the ground. What am I hearing about an injury? Winter Storm quickly ushering the kids out. This conversation could get ugly. Full hiss let out yet another sigh. Silverfern attacked me at the carry-on place. It's not that big of a deal. The leader's eyes narrowed. Is there a reason? The orange tom shrugged. I don't know, maybe she's still mad that we fought as apprentices, but she looked fairly angry. Deadheart spoke up. But to this extent, she's a warrior, he commented. Brindleshade, stay with Volhis. I will get the full run of the story. Even if I have to find Silverfern myself, she should know where her values lie is all I'm saying. The grumbly medicine cat said as the leader left. Brindleshade was a little pained to see her leader go, but nodded and sat down in front of Volhis. It didn't take long for the very experienced leader to pick up on Silverfern's scent and find her underneath the thunder path. I assume you're here for me, Silverfern let out a huff turning to face her leader. The leader approached her, not seeming to be hostile. Why is Volhis yowling at everyone in camp that you two got into a fight? Silverfern stayed quiet, her eyes glued to the ground, not even sure how to respond. Does she lie and say she thought he was an enemy cat? Say that she's still mad about the past, or the truth. Maristar stepped closer, gently looking her over for any wounds. Look, I don't want to talk about it. I'm fine, Silverfern said harshly. Just exile me for a while. I'll leave. I don't care. Maristar's eyes narrowed. That would be too easy. You swore loyalty to Shadowclown. To me, Silverfern felt a few tears begin to roll down her cheek. She didn't hate the clan, just losing her father. She... something in her snapped. Just the thought caused her heart to beat faster as the rain began to pour down. Taking a deep breath, she responds, I'm sorry for attacking Volhis. Maristar tilted her head as Silverfern showed a sign of remorse. I just want to know what happened, Silverfern. I know this wouldn't happen for no reason. Silverfern lied, kind of. I was still upset about him bullying me as an apprentice is all. I was alone and he was alone, so I wanted revenge. It was foolish of me. You're better than that. 
Her gaze softened slightly. Revenge over something that happened moons ago? The leader questioned. Yes, I let my anger get the best of me. I'm so sorry, Maristar. She dipped her head. The leader sighed. A stressful moment will get to everyone. It is my responsibility to take care of my warriors. I said it during your apprentice ceremony and I will say it again. Come to me. Silverfern takes a step closer, wanting to bury her muzzle into her leader's soft fur, but shook her head, just nodding. Marrowstar comfortingly pressed her own head against Silver Ferns for a moment before turning away briskly. Come on, let's get out of this smelly tunnel. I will, Silver Fern said. As she walked behind her leader, she couldn't help thinking about what her next move would be. She needed to get back at Stormheart. The two cats make their way back to camp as the scene fades to white. You now see a familiar cat you recognize as Little Sprout. Hi guys! So this is actually footage that I recently found on my computer. It was going to be part of a bigger series, but we ended up cutting some stuff out. And so this is what I have left. Let me know if you guys like it. I'm thinking about continuing with Silver and Storm because I really like their stories and I have a lot of ideas of where it could continue. But I hope in the meantime, you guys will enjoy this. If you do, feel free to subscribe, leave a like, comment, all that really helps the channel out and helps me make more of these really fun movies for you guys. But until next time, bye guys!